Hi, my name is Emma Loop. I'm here with NDP candidate Percy Hatfield for the Windsor Tecumseh riding to talk about the upcoming provincial by election. Hi, Percy. Hi, Emma. How are you? Good. How are you? What are your hobbies? What are my hobbies? <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I'm a War of 1812 reenactor, are actually. You? I, yeah, oh, I do that know. for fun. Yeah. <laughs> what are your hobbies? Uh, being interviewed at the Windsor Star um, or CBC, any place at all. No, mm -hmm. no I, 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 I do like to golf, but I haven't held a golf club this year, so uh, my hobbies have more or less been put on hold. I really like to read, um, but um, again, there's not a lot of time for that. So No, no. So you haven't been golfing at all this year yet? Not at all. No? Um, it's just uh, been pretty hectic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your favorite course? Roseland, of course. It's uh, owned by the public, uh, and uh, it's a it's a really fine course designed by Donald Ross, and one of the few that's designed by Donald Ross and open to the public. Mm, and the prices are right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you think that after the uh, by-election, you'll be able to to hit the uh, the green soon? Well, I would love to, uh, and I'm glad Phil Mickelson won the British Open. Uh, <laughs> I didn't even get a chance to see it, but I read about it this morning. Um, I, I would like to get out a couple of times. I know I have a tournament coming up. Um, I always go in the Tim Hortons tournament in the fall, and I think it's Friday the 13th. Uh, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. The last time I went in uh, a couple of years ago, I bought a $50 raffle ticket, and I won a 1994 Jaguar XJS V12 convertible. Uh, it eats bad. a lot of gas, but it was only a $50 car, so I can't really complain. Yeah, do you still have it? My wife drives it. I struggled to get in and out of it. Oh, she lets okay. me drive it up to the gas station for her. So. <laughs> well, speaking of cars, let's talk a little bit about jobs here yeah. in Windsor. What do you think Windsor's big um, money maker will be in the future? Where, where do we get jobs? Well, I think the money maker will always be in automotive, automotive related, um, and I hope we can retain some of those jobs. Um, we've seen failed liberal policies like 2,000 local jobs lost at Windsor Raceway because their policy says, you know, we want to convince, close the slots, try to convince people to go over to Caesars. It hasn't worked. Uh, perhaps a small percentage only of the slot players. But then that led to the total collapse of the local harness racing industry. And by those standards, 2,000 local jobs lost. So we have to do more. I've been working with the horse people trying to get more race dates in Leamington, for example. And right now they get one race date a year. If they can get 12 or 15 and prove that a non-profit agency can run a successful track, maybe, just maybe, uh, in Lakeshore or Tecumseh, they would build a new track and, and run it as a not-for-profit. But keep those that are interested in the hardest racing industry, they have to breed the horses, have to train the horses, and it's like, you know, playing in the Spitfires and the OHL and then eventually going to the NHL. You need all of these small tracks to have the horses trained and ex get experience, the same with the drivers and the trainers, and then they move on up to the bigger leagues, the bigger tracks, the more money. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's part of what we, I'd like to see, if at all possible. But other than that, I mean, we have to continue working to diversify the economy. We have to continue working on green energy. It's not going to be, you know, we don't want to see more nuclear plants built, for example, because of the risks involved. But never in Ontario has a nuclear power plant ever been built on time and on budget. I mean, the costs just go up and up and up, sometimes like four or five, six times more than you thought. So, you know, it's, it's working in, in green energy. It's working on diversification of the economy. Uh, we have the um, the hangar at the airport. We're trying to get planes in there and train people to work on uh, learning how to overhaul airplanes. So CS Wind is still building wind towers. You know, we do what we can mm -hmm. and try to encourage people to think about diversification. Think about Windsor. I mean, ideally, we're situated ideally in North America, either to provide America, Mexico, or further up the highway. So. Um, We've got a great location, we've got a trained workforce, we got people out of work looking for jobs. So we're ideally suited if we'd only get the right partnerships to create more jobs here. Mm -hmm. And uh, you mentioned training the workforce. What does education, you know, post secondary education, like at the University of Windsor and St. Clair, what does that have to do with getting people back to work? Well, I think you can go back further than that. If you go back into the high schools and, you know, start telling high school students and their parents, uh, this is what we see happening 10 or 15 years down the road. This is the, uh, 
the occupations that we say see are going to be in demand. And be it teaching, be it nursing, be it lawyers, be it tool and die, uh, be it plumbers, electricians, welders, whatever it is. And then you can sort of help channel uh, your students. I mean, we're always going to need doctors. We're always going to need pharmacists. We know that. But what are the occupations that we're going to need? Is it going to be welders? Is it going to be plumbers? Um, so if we can work with um, the high schools, the colleges, the universities, and have them offer the courses that we see coming up. I mean, St. Clair College is doing a tremendous job now. Was, I toured their dental facility, and um, it's just amazing what they can do now in teaching dental assistants, but also the, the medical people, uh, the EMS people. Um, they're, they're getting ready for the jobs of the future at St. Clair. And the same at the university in their uh, science or technology, their computers, their automotive research. Um, they have a lot of partnerships. They know where the jobs are going to be. And we have to continue to work with them and encourage them. And if that means helping them out with grant money to do the research and development, then a government should be doing that. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned health care a lot in there. In your opinion, what is Windsor's biggest, most urgent health care issue uh, right now? I don't know if you can nail it down to one. I would say mental health is certainly up there. Um, child psychologists are certainly in need. Um, it just seems that, you know, a few years ago when they closed down a bunch of facilities, uh, people were put out into the community that still should have been had better care. I've met with parents um, whose children are turning 19 and now losing the support that they had because of their disabilities up until the age of 18. So uh, we have to look at more in general terms of uh, all the issues that are out there. There's talk about a new mega hospital, um, and perhaps that's going to work at some point. But again, uh, we have to look at what are the most stressing needs. And long-term care, we're an aging uh, population in this area. We have to do more to put facilities together that people going into care are well looked after. We have to do better inspections. Um, we can't leave people in the hallways. We, we can't leave ambulances stacked up transferring patients. We need to do a better job of coordinating uh, the resources that we have, and I think we have a lot of work to do in that regard. Mm -hmm. And uh, now to touch on the environment, what's the province's role <coughs> in, in making sure that we have cleaner air and cleaner water? I mean, it's been a hot topic with the, the pet coke mm -hmm. across the river. What's the province's role in all of that? Well. It's more of a federal role, if you will, if you think about transboundary pollution, the prevailing winds that blow uh, the crap out of the air from the coal-burning plants in Ohio and Indiana and Michigan up, up this way. Um, but the pet coke, um, you know, was on the other side of the border, international boundary, more of a federal responsibility. Um, but it still blows over here. So, you know, the province has to coordinate with the federal government and with the, uh, the state government and the national government in America in that case to come up with better, I have an outstanding council questions and when everybody else was talking about it over there my question was something like um, can they do the same thing here and if they can do it here what safeguards do we have that it's properly stored and properly covered because I didn't want to see the piles coming to this side of the river if they kicked them off that side of the river. Mm -hmm. So. There's a municipal responsibility, but also a, a provincial responsibility. But we have to do more. We have to coordinate. We have to convince other governments that if you want to you know, free the planet of some of this pollution, you have to uh, have a coordinated strategy on getting rid of the, the stuff that you put in the air, the bad stuff that goes in the air. Hmm. And now let's touch on energy as well. Mm -hmm. um, energy costs in Ontario are high. Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about it at the last debate. How does the province um, start to lower energy costs without further damaging such a messy system? You know, uh, if you talk to uh, the people who run uh, the local energy, uh, like Enwin or Essex Power, they'll say they are so cost efficient compared to Ontario Hydro. So perhaps you've got to go to Ontario Hydro. Maybe uh, coordinate some kind of a dismantling of that, giving it the responsibility is like where um, Ontario Hydro comes into this county, for example. They're telling Leamington, uh, we're not going to give you any more ability 
uh, to increase your power demand because, uh, and that'll hurt industry out there, greenhouses and so on, uh, because, you know, there's only so much on the grid as opposed to, you know, if you gave it to Essex Power, maybe Essex Power could make that happen mm -hmm. um, and recover that cost over, over a period of time. So I think we have to look at all of the power agencies that we have in this province, be it Ontario Power, Ontario Hydro, Ontario Generating, and maybe there's a coordination we can get with all of the local utilities as well. And we also have to think about capping some of the salaries these people are making and some of the, the parachutes they get when they're fired or leave. I mean, they get millions of dollars. And that's money that could be put back into the system. There's also this weird thing uh, with Ontario Hydro that when they ship power out after it's generated and it comes down the line, uh, a lot of it is lost in the transmission, but you and I are paying for that. Mm -hmm. You and I have to make up for whatever power they lost. We didn't receive it, but under the billing system, we have to pay for it. That's not right. So, and we also have to think, we want to lower the cost. I know the NDP policy of trying to get rid of the HST on the, uh, the cost of the power, the, that you're, the heating bills. And, um, you know, there's a lot that can be done, but you need a coordinated strategy. And you, you need people of all parties to sit down and say, look, let's take the politics out of this. Let's think about the people and the cost and how can we make it work. And I don't think we're doing enough of that. I don't think we're sitting down and saying, how do we make this province work? All right, thanks so much, Percy. That's been uh, Red Chair Chat with NDP candidate Percy Hatfield. A red chair, I never thought of that. Should have been an orange chair, perhaps. Uh. <laughs>